A statistics major did not study for his final exam. It was a true false test, so he decided to flip a coin for the answers. The professor watched the student the entire two hours as he was flipping the coin, writing the answer, flipping the coin, and writing the answer. At the end of the two hours, everyone else had left the final except for the one student. The professor walked up to his desk and interrupts, saying, Listen, I can tell you did not study for this test. You didn't even open the exam. If you're just flipping a coin to find the answer, what is taking you so long? The student replied bitterly as he is still flipping the coin. Shh, I am checking my answers. So let's go ahead and go on to some probability rules. First of all, imagine an urn with four marbles. And you might have done this when you did probability in geometry or middle school. We've got two red, one green, and one white. We can actually make a sample tree to determine the outcomes of drawing one marble. So there, there is before I pick, and then I could end up with one red, or the second red marble, or the green or the white. So I'm going ahead and listing them out. So this would be my sample space. Now I could just actually list the one red um, and that would also be a legitimate way. The reason I like listing it this way is all of these are equally likely. So if all outcomes are equally likely, then the probability an event A occurs is the number of outcomes for A divided by the total number of outcomes. This means that probability can only take values between zero and one because the number of outcomes for A cannot exceed the total, so your maximum is one. And the least number of outcomes for A is zero. It can never be negative. Now you can also express that as a range in percent from zero percent to a hundred percent. So what is the probability we draw a green marble? Well it was just one out of four outcomes or 0.25 and it's also known as 25 percent. So a probability model lists all possible outcomes and associated probabilities. If, if we complete the model, it can often look like a table here. So the probability of red, there were two ways to get red out of four. So that's half, 50-50. Green was one out of four, which is 0.25. White is 0.25 as well. So what do we get when we add them all up? We get one, which kind of confirms that the probabilities must add up to one or 100%. If these do not add up to 1 or 100%, it is not a valid probability model. The complement rule, which I also like to call the not rule, is another important uh, tool in probability. So the set of outcomes that are not in the event A is called the complement of A, denoted as A with a little c for complement. And the way I like to think of complement, Let's say you say, oh, those shoes complement your outfit. It doesn't mean that the shoes actually say to the outfit, hey, you look good. No, they actually complete the outfit. So if you have an event A, everything else that completes the sa sample space that's not A, that's called the complement. So the probability, since they add up, have to add up to 100%, is 1 minus the probability the event does occur, which gives you this formula right here. So we know the probability of drawing a green marble is one fourth. What is the probability we do not draw a green marble? Well, if it's 25% for a green marble, then it has to be 75% against. So there you go. One minus 0.25 is 0.75. Now we also have or probability. So what's the probability of getting a red or a white marble? Well, there are two reds and one white. So I could say the probability of red or white is two plus the one or three fourths, which gives me 0.75 or 75%. Notice that that symbol right there means or. If we're only drawing one marble, is it possible to get red and white marble at the same time? No, because a marble must be red or white, it cannot be both. When something, two things cannot occur at the same time, we say they are mutually exclusive. And so that's an important thing to keep in mind for probability. Uh, what do you get when you add the probabilities for getting a red marble without of a white marble? One, one half plus one fourth is three fourths or 75%. So that actually worked pretty well, just adding the probabilities of the red and the white. So or probability when event A and event B are mutually exclusive is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now let's look at this scenario where I look at a survey about from my class about whether they like cats or dogs. Um, 
you can see that the total who number liked dogs was 20, those who didn't like dogs was 5, those who liked cats was 18, and those who didn't like cats was 7, giving me a total of 25 students that I surveyed. So what's the probability a student likes dogs? Well, if they like dogs, that actually means all of this. So let me go ahead, pointer options. There we go. So all this entire row is likes dogs. Okay. So I take the 20 out of the total, 25, and that would give me 0 0.80 or 80%. So what's the probability someone likes cats? Well, how did I get that? Let me go ahead and change the color and we'll go blue. So you can see that, oops, pointer options, blue and color. There we go. So the column that says like cats, the total that like cats is 18 out of how many? 25. So that gives me 0 .70, 0 0.72 or 72%. Is liking cats and liking dogs mutually exclusive? No, it is not mutually exclusive because I've got 15 students here who like cats and dogs at the same time. By the way, if I had added those probabilities, here's a hint. They add up to 100%, more than 100%. So that means they have to have some overlap. And you can tell that there are those 15 students who overlap between liking cats and liking dogs. So how many students like cats or dogs? Well, if they like cats or dogs, that's probably right in here. Well, it is right in here. So it would be 15 plus 5 plus 3, which is 23. Uh, or I could just say 25 minus this person here who doesn't like cats or dogs. And that gives me the same answer. So the probability would be 23 over 25 that a student likes cats or dogs. So that would be 92%. Now, the general probability addition rule says I can add the probabilities, but I need to make sure I subtract the overlap. So the probability of cats plus the probability of dogs minus the probability of cats and dogs. And so the probability of cats is 0.72. Uh, it's 0.8 for dogs. People who like cats and dogs, there were 15 of those out of 25. So I added these two together to get 1.52. This is 0.6 and I end up with 0.92, which is exactly the same answer I had before when I went ahead and individually counted them. By the way, the good news on this formula, it is on your formula sheet for the AP test. So you do not need to memorize it. Probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. So let's go ahead and look at another table of data. We have a random sample of Cedar Ridge High School graduates who had completed al the Algebra 2 requirement for graduation. So if I total up my students, uh, 412 plus 423 is 435, 64 plus 157 is 221, 476 adding this way, 180 adding this way, and if I add them up, I should pretty much match up 656 total students. So what's the probability they took pre-AP geometry? Well, pre-AP geometry is this group right here. So it should be 221 out of 656. What's the probability they took pre-AP algebra 2? Well, that would be this group right here. So it would be 180 out of 656, or 0.274. Now, what's the probability they took pre-AP geometry and pre-AP algebra 2? Well, that 157 is the only number that fits into both. And so I would get 0.239. Now, if I wanted to know the probability they took pre-AP geometry or pre-AP algebra 2, um, that basically, pre -AP, uh, that would be this group right here. Pre -pre oops, sorry. And let's see if I can do that. No. Pre AP geometry or pre AP algebra 2. There you go. Right there. So that yellow group right there. So it's these three numbers. And basically, if I add them up, uh, 157 plus 64 plus 23, and then divide by 656, I get 0 0.372. Now, if I add these two probabilities, I don't get. 
point, uh, 0.372 isn't the same as 0.239. That's what we just figured out. Why isn't that? Well, that's because I have some overlap. These 157s are being counted for the pre-AP geometry uh, probability and for the pre-AP algebra 2 probability. So it gets counted twice. There is overlap. Now, another tool we can use are Venn diagrams which to represent actual frequencies or probabilities. Um, here's a very generic Venn diagram, and I hope this helps you kind of keep it straight. So first of all, this is in A and B at the same time. So that's W, and it would go right there in the middle. Then we have uh, represents those who are not in A, so that would be either Y or Z, and also not in B, so that must be Z, because that's the only one that's not in either one, and that would actually go outside of the two circles right there. Then we have those in A, but not B. So here's A, which is W and X, and X is the one that's not in B. So that would be X right there. It's in A, but not B. That would be this piece on the left of the circle. Finally, the one we're left with is Y, which is those in B, but not in A. So it goes on the right part of the B circle. So hopefully that helps you kind of um, go from the table to the Venn diagram, and you can go backwards from the Venn diagram to the table. So let's look at this example and figure out where, how do we create this Venn diagram from this table. Well, we have 15 like cats and dogs, so that has to go in the overlap. Then we have two that don't like cats or dogs, so that goes outside. Uh, then we have the five that like dogs but not cats. So they have to be in the dog circle but not the cat circle. And then finally we have the three that like the cats but not the dogs. And that's how you create a Venn diagram. Now you can do probabilities from Venn diagrams as well using the actual frequencies. First of all, it helps to count the things. For example, the number of sophomores in geometry and algebra 2 at the same time well, that would just be the 23 right here because the 23 students standing in here are in the geometry circle and in the algebra 2 circle at the same time. The number of sophomores in geometry, you might be tempted to say it's the 452, but we also want to include these 23 because they're also in the geometry circle, so they're 475. Same thing applies for algebra 2. We actually have to include both these numbers it's 154 and 23. Now, if I say geometry or algebra 2, I'm actually talking about these three numbers here. So 452, the 23, and the 154, which means 629. Uh, the total number of sophomores are those 629 plus the 47 that are not in geometry or algebra 2. Now, the probability of sophomores in geometry is basically that 475 coming from these two over 676, which is 0 0.703. The probability of sophomores in algebra 2 is I have to combine these two, which gives me 177 over 676 or 0 0.262. So now the probability of sophomore is in geometry and algebra 2. That would only be those 23 right here in the center. So it would be 23 over our total, which is 676, or about 3.4%. Notice how much it changes when I say OR. So when I say OR, that means I include Algebra 2, um, I include Geometry. So that's this whole group right here for the OR. And I get 629 over 676, or about 93% of sophomores are in Geometry or Algebra 2. So Venn diagrams can also have probabilities instead of frequencies. So you can see this here. This Venn diagram is actually not completely filled out. The probability of stats is going to be right here because those are in the stat circle, or 0.16. The probability of calculus, which would be inside the calculus circle, and that would be 0.12 plus 0.02, which is 0.14. 
the probability of stats or calculus. So I would only count each each of these numbers once. So or if I did this probability, I could use the formula. So I could just add, add them up once. 0.14 plus 0.02 plus 0.12. Guess what I get? 0.28. Now if I did that formula, probability of A plus probability of B minus the overlap, the and, that also works. It gives me 0.28. Now finally, what is the complement to stats or calculus? Well, that would be all of this yellow area outside of the two circles, so not in stats or calculus. So what is the probability a student isn't enrolled in one of these uh, two classes for seniors? Well, we'd say it's 1 minus the probability they're in either one, which is 0.72.